Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 28 november 2015. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Vandaag op de Contestia bij de uitzendingen met de bekende parameters 8 tonen en 355 hertz zijn de belangrijkste. De rest is te vinden op pnlete.nl. De uitzendingen in het weekend zijn gewoonlijk in het Engels. All our weekend shows are in English. Today we have Contestia again simultaneously with the spoken text, which has the parameters as stated on www.papaalfa0echotangoecho.nl. Most important are 8 tones and 355 hertz. Today we have the propagation bulletin of the RSGB and several other topics of all around the world. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News. Now the radio propagation report compiled by Golf Zero, Kilo, Yankee Alpha, Golf 4, Bravo, Alpha, Oscar, and Golf 3, Yankee Lima, Alpha, on Friday, the 27th of November. This week's been geomagnetically quiet, with the K-index hovering around 0 or 1. This is in contrast to the extremely unsettled conditions we've been having on and off over the past few months. Coupled with a solar flux index of around 110 to 120, this has brought reasonably settled conditions on HF and good conditions on MF too. Medium wave enthusiasts have heard radio station WBBR in New York on 11.30 kHz with ease during the night, which bodes well for top band propagation. The lower HF bands have also been lively with John, Hotel Romeo 5 slash Golf 4 India Romeo November in Honduras being worked by Jack, Golf 8 Delta X-Ray on 80, 40 and 30 metres. So with the increasing periods of darkness, now is the time to make the most of the lower bands. Next week, NOAA predicts the solar flux index will remain in the 110 to 115 range, but with unsettled geomagnetic conditions next weekend, that's the 5th and the 6th. Meanwhile, Morse enthusiasts can hopefully make the most of the settled conditions during this weekend's CQ Worldwide contest. There should be plenty of DX to work, and the bands are predicted to be reasonable with reliable openings up to 21 MHz and even 28 MHz virtually guaranteed. And now the VHF and upwards propagation news. Well, it looks like another difficult week for tropospheric propagation. There are low-pressure systems passing to the north of Britain and high pressure displaced well to the south over Iberia and the Mediterranean. Now, this means that conditions on the VHF and the UHF bands will probably be flat for much of the time with no significant openings due to weather events. That said, though, the Foxtrot 5 Lima Echo November forecast page suggest a minor tropospheric enhancement late on Tuesday and into early Wednesday. For meteor scatter enthusiasts, there's just two weeks to go until the major Geminid shower, which appears on December the 13th. So sharpen up those operating skills with some early morning random QSOs until then. For EME operators, path losses are beginning to rise again and windows shortening as the moon heads out towards apogee from today and declination goes negative again. In all then, this is probably a good week to try some VHF satellite operation to keep the old QSO count up. Pete 2 Echo 0 Sierra Quebec Lima tells us that Alpha Oscar 85, Sierra Oscar 50, November Oscar 84, Alpha Oscar 73, that's Fun Cube, and Foxtrot Oscar 29, X Ray Whiskey slash 2 Foxtrot, and Alpha Oscar 7 are all in good health. And that's it from the propagation team for another week. The 2015 ITU World Radio Conference in Geneva has concluded. Following earlier successes at 5 MHz, the conference has agreed to include a future agenda item for the next conference in 2019, which will consider harmonising the 50 MHz band in Region 1. Several other agenda items that might have affected the amateur services have also concluded largely favourably. The Society would like to thank Colin Thomas, G3 Papa Sierra Mike, Ian Greenshields, Golf 4 Foxtrot Sierra Uniform and many other volunteers for their efforts over the years in advancing the amateur cause at ITU in often very challenging circumstances. Attention now immediately turns to preparations for the 2019 ITU World Radio Conference.
APRS CaveLink uses the Amateur Radio's Automatic Packet Reporting System, or APRS, inside caves to get their position data and other messages out of the caves. It's been reported on Hackaday.com. Digipeters and battery packs are dropped in, in Hansel and Gretel style, as the cavers work their way through the cave. The trick is to make sure to place one repeater before they've entirely lost radio signal from the previous one. But a test of the APRS CaveLink project got a full mile's worth of transmission in Mammoth Cave without using wires at all. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. A satellite mishap is letting physicists test Einstein's theory of relativity. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade, right? That, at least, is the motto the European Space Agency seems to have embraced with respect to two wayward satellites which are being repurposed to provide the most accurate assessment yet of how gravity affects the passage of time. VK7WI News says that last year, a Russian Soyuz rocket accidentally placed two ESA-operated GPS satellites into elliptical rather than circular orbits. The faulty launch leaves the satellites unfit to perform their intended duties as part of a global Galileo GPS system. It would have been a huge waste of money and resources, but there's a silver lining. To wit, physicists now have a unique opportunity to test one of the key predictions of Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, that clocks run more slowly when they're close to heavy objects because of how gravity warps the fabric of space-time. As the two Galileo satellites swing toward and away from the Earth in their oblong orbits, German and French physicists will track the speeding and slowing of time using the spacecraft's onboard atomic clocks. To date, our best measurements of the so-called time dilation effect were made in 1976 in an experiment that lasted a mere two hours. The Galileo satellites will be tracked for a year, enabling physicists to make measurements up to four times more accurate. Some friendly fire is occurring on the amateur radio bands when data transmissions are suffering avoidable interference at the hands of we fellow radio amateurs. A few may consider digital signals as being that coming from intruders while others are not careful enough when choosing where to operate on a clear frequency. The issue of digital modes was raised by the New Zealand Association of Radio Transmitters, the NZART, at the recent IARU Region 3 conference in Bali. The NZART paper by Murray Greenman, ZL1BPU, pointed to their increased popularity, yet the band planned digital mode section continues to be plagued with unnecessary interference. So please, listen first, then if need be, QSY.